This video, we are going to use the file system model to show the file system in two different views, and we're going to show how to synchronize those views. So let's jump in here, and we're going to say tree. And this is going to be very similar to what we've already done. That way it's easier to understand. So we've got a tree and a list, and we're going to slap those in together. Bang. Now we're going to click on this list here. And we're going to say view mode. Now, by default, it's in list. Now, there's really only two. You could actually create a custom view mode, but that's way more advanced than what the series is going to cover. We're going to flip this to icon mode. Then we're going to click here, set that to layout. Let's give this a good build. And let's go ahead and jump in here, and we're going to add our include. So we're going to say include. Qdir. We want the Q file system model. Don't really need them, but I'm going to include them. The Q list view and the Q tree view. Then we're going to go down here. Make our init function. We want to hold a current directory in memory, so we're going to put that right there as a private variable. And we want a file system model. Let's go ahead, right click, and let's add that. Let's go into our interface, right click that tree view, and we want activated. And we're going to go in here, right click that list view. And we're going to go to activate it on that as well. Pretty simple to understand. Really what we want to do is we want to initialize this program. And then as the user plays around in the tree view and the list view, we want them to update back and forth. So let's go in here. And we're going to say model. Set root path. Dir current path. Now we want to tie those two views into the same model. So we're going to say UI tree view. We're going to set model on that. And then UI list view. And we're going to set the model on that to the exact same model. From there, we can say UI. And actually, let's back up. I want to demonstrate that later. So now we're going to get rid of those extra columns in our tree view. And we're going to say i is less than the model column count. And we're going to say ui tree view column. Now in case you skipped the previous video, we're going to actually show you what this does. So I'm going to comment that out first and foremost. Save and run. All right, so in our tree view, you see how we have these different columns. We're going to get rid of those. That's what this hide column is going to do. We're going to basically get rid of everything except for the name. You notice how these have small icons and this has a larger icon. Like I said, really this only has two modes, icon or list view. Can make a custom one, but it's very, very advanced. So we're going to go in and we're going to show you how in the tree view, when the user activates something, we're going to set the list view, set root item. I'm sorry, set root index. And we're just going to give it the same index. And then if they're playing around in list view, we want a UI list view, and we want to set root index. But we also want to update that tree view as well. So we're going to say UI tree view set current index. Notice there's a distinct difference between root and current. Root is mean you can't go any higher, where current means you're in a sub item somewhere. And then we're going to say UI tree view. 
And then we want to expand just that index, not the whole thing. And let's save and run and let's see what this looks like. Now, as we expand this out, let's go into home, go in here. I think I have some pictures on this little virtual machine. There we do. Yeah. And you can see we have these really ugly icons and because of the name, it kind of acts weird and looks weird and doesn't really scale well and just kind of acts a little nuts. So I'm not a fan of the icon view and I'm going to show you how to change that. And that's why I think by default, it actually has the list view or list mode. So we're going to say UI list view set view mode. And then we'll say Q list. And we want the actually Q list view. And we want the view mode. And if we go in here, there's really only two icon and list. We've got a whole bunch of classes, but they don't really do anything for us. So we're going to just select that to list mode. Save run and demonstrate the same thing. Now let's go in here. I think we're in pictures. Yeah. Much more organized looking. Let's just collapse that. And if I double click this wallpaper over here in the list, you can see how it expands and goes right to it. So that's a really good example of how you can take one model across multiple views and synchronize them back and forth. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of a larger project out of Udemy called Cute Widgets for Beginners with C++. This is a large course with 73 lectures and 17 hours of video footage. This course covers everything from what is a widget all the way down to complete example applications using the skills you've learned in this course. Sorry, there's no QML in this course. This is strictly cute widgets. I will make a QML course later on, but this just focuses on widgets from a beginner's perspective. Even though this is a beginner's course, you do need to have some fundamental information available. You need to know C++ and the Qt Core Libs. I do have some courses available out on Udemy, Qt Core Beginners, Intermediate Advanced. It's not necessary you take these courses, but it is highly recommended. And as always, I'm available out on the Voidrooms Facebook group, along with 3,000 other programmers. See you there.